welcome again uh, to, I guess we've been doing this for a few months now. It's hard to believe the Buck Starts Here series, and um, all indications are we'll continue until uh, the crisis ends. Um, and that's right around the corner, we're assured, from, from Washington. Uh, I'm not going to take any of your time. We try to be very, very respectful of your lunch hours. Format will be the same today as in the past. We'll have three presenters, one giving us an update on uh, events uh, uh, over the last two weeks, uh, and then we'll have a drill down on an important issue, and then uh, finally we'll uh, have some hope, I hope, uh, as to how the business community, the actual employers in uh, our midst, are dealing with these very, very troubling times. Um, first, I'd like to end, as, as you know, according to the format, we'll save the questions until the end. The last half hour will be for questions and answers, so be formulating your questions as we go along here. Um, a lot of people uh, uh, bl blame this uh, crisis on the repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act, and if you want to find a, a culprit in that regard, Stefan Jure here this morning uh, was uh, instrumental in the passage of the Graham Leach Bliley Act. So if you uh, brought any fruit or you have any uh, the remains of your sandwiches and you want to throw them, Stefan, who is uh, associated with uh, Deutsch Williams uh, here in Boston, will be giving us our update. Uh, we're honored to have Professor Tamar Frankel from the Boston University School of Law, who is um, one of the, if not the, national expert on fiduciary law. And she's going to be talking to us about Ponzi schemes. Uh, coincidentally, or not so coincidentally, she wrote a book uh, that was published just a couple of years ago called Trust and Honesty. And she also represented Carlo Ponzi uh, in the original Ponzi scheme. No? I'm ancient, no, okay. but not that ancient. Okay. Uh, and then finally, we hear from uh, Alan McDonald. Alan is an old friend of mine, and he's been the head of the uh, Massachusetts Business Roundtable. He informs me today for almost or all, just a little, over, a little over 20, yeah. 20 years. Um, and I, I won't go into any more of his background, uh, other than that he worked with uh, GE and Gulf Oil and others, and uh, he's a dear friend, and he will give us the perspective uh, of the business community. Uh, one of the things that uh, Alan does in his spare time is he's an avid golfer, golfer and he's involved with the, um, the rules of golf. Do we have any golfers here? A few. Okay, well, you, you may know that rules are everything, and so I was talking to Alan the other day about what the changes are coming up this year. What's the biggest change coming? And you'll be delighted to know that now when your ball goes in a bunker and it's face down so you can't read the number or the label on it, you're allowed to pick it up and turn it over okay, <laughs> to see if it's your ball or not. Um, I remember days when that was a big rule change, okay? Uh, contrasted with the rule change that uh, Stefan is gonna tell us about that uh, came out of Washington uh, just in the last two weeks. So think of that contrast, all right? When picking up your ball in a sand in a bunker was a big deal versus trillion dollar bailout programs coming out of Washington. Okay, we're up. Stefan, it's all yours. Thank you. 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 Thank you.